All right, welcome everybody. This is an All the Leads case study. My name is Chad Corbett, and with us is Bill Bird from Bill, you're in Marin, California, right? I am in Marin in San Francisco, and I'm with Remax. Yeah. Are you in your new house, or your? Is that the one you just bought? Yeah, yeah. I'm in my new house, which is in Katati, which is I am overlooking in gorgeous three acres that my oldest daughter is thrilled about it because she gets to keep her all her horses in her backyard now. And how did you find that deal? Uh, how I found that deal? Uh, someone died and the lender picked it up and I got it from the lender. So, yeah, so it was a perfect deal. So I wanted to, I invited Bill to do this tonight because he has been with us for gosh, what, two years now? Um, since, uh, and my company is all the leads. I'm not sure where that, where all this will be used. So I'm the co-founder and the trainer to a company called All the Leads. We provide uh, a complete probate system for agents and brokers across the country. And Bill and I met early in, early in our company's history. And uh, he took probate mastery, which is our advanced training, kind of out of the gate, and has really taken this to the level I hoped all agents would take it to. Um, Bill's done a really good job of doing the right things in the right order for the right reasons and has really built a, a solid business around that. So I wanted to uh, ask him to, to meet me here for a quick interview to hopefully, you know, kind of introduce some of you to probate that might have heard about it at a conference or somewhere from a coach, but also those who are our subscribers that are just getting started because, um, I mean, Bill, what did you know about probate before you did your first deal? You know, um, I was flat broke and um, I was really doing a lot of cold calling and, and, and getting going. And my uncle the pro, was a probate attorney. And I thought, you know, if I could find a way to get a hold of the people um, that had passed away or their heirs or estates, the trustees, um, that I would create a niche in this market that no one else had. And for two years, I would go down every week and try to pull all the probates. And let me tell you, gathering the information was 90% of my problem. And my first two years, I did three probates, which were great. I made, I made great money on them. But when I heard about all the leads from one of my students, um, I called Jim Sullivan. And it was like a dream come true. I mean, I thought that, that he was the holy grail when I was talking to him. So I didn't know anything. When I did my first one, I was by, I had moved from Hawaii to Virginia and I went from like 1.35 million, more like your price point, to 140,000 bucks median. So I was buying and selling houses because that was the only way I could, you know, make any, any kind of money. And I realized that most of my leads were better off selling, you know, conventionally than they were selling for cash, even though they thought they were interested in selling for cash. So the first lady I helped, we ended up making $20,000 more, which in this market, $20,000 is significant. It's a lot different than, than my last market, the one you're working in. But yeah. I didn't know a damn thing about probate. And I kind of learned all this. And we've kind of built the whole system off of, you know, what I've learned in my business, my partner, Jim, who Bill referenced, and then like people like Bill, I've worked with hundreds of agents across the country kind of figuring out what's working, not what's not, what was working, but now isn't like what's changing. So we're constantly updating our training and our system um, to, to help you guys build a niche in your business. But anyways, not a commercial for the company. I really wanted to try to capture your experience, Bill, for what, what you've, how you've built this, um, why you've built it, you know, as, as a, as an agent, you have every option to, to do anything in the world. Why is this your niche? And just, so just tell us kind of like what you, I mean, you started to tell us how you, before you met us, but since you've gotten the choke point out of it, since you've been able to like, we, so just so you guys know, Bill's a subscriber of all the leads. We gather the data, we deliver it directly into a CRM specifically for probate prospecting. Um, I don't know. Are you using our mail service or are you still, you doing your own? Yeah, no, I do my own mail, but I definitely love the CRM. Yeah. That's one of the most exciting things you've added to it. Yeah. So for most people, we, I mean, the, the, the kind of full potential of this is we deliver your lead directly into a CRM. It triggers off a mail order and it triggers off a call center order. 
So we actually, we provide, we not only gather the leads for you and train you, we do all of your mailing. We completely automate direct mail and we can completely automate your call center. So we have ISAs that are converting about 48 to one. So it takes us 48 leads to set an appointment. But yeah. anyways, Bill is, um, he, he's got his own spin on things. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to invite him to do this because he has, there's kind of two prongs of this. There's the marketing arm, which is us marketing directly to the personal representative, and that's through direct mail and phone calls. But then there's also referrals. So you, you have a referral network that can bring you just as many deals as your marketing efforts, and Bill's really mastered that. So I think that he's yeah. probably the best example we have of getting the full potential out of this campaign. So Bill, just kind of take, take them from the time where, where you found us where we got we gained back all that you gained back all that time and then how you scaled the business up to be what it is for you today so um you know the whole point uh, of talking to jim and realizing that i could add a spoke to my business that was bringing me leads quality leads with quality information quality phone numbers quality addresses it was a it was an opportunity really to turn the phone um, into like fishing. You know, I really think that all the leads, um, if you work it right, it's, it's, it's just like a bass pond. You're always stocking it, right? And um, you, uh, you, you call them, you send them a letter, and you'll be surprised at how warm the people are when you call them with solutions for their problems. You know, and I really say you've got four people. You've got, you know, your ambulance chaser phone call, and they hang up the phone on you normally. Then you get an, another one that um, we're going to go ahead and rent the property. So you want to save that person for a future reference. And a lot of times they get tired of renting the property. And they want to sell it, right? Well, in nine months, right? Right. And then you have the, the, the third one where, you know, this is too soon for me. Can you call me back? And then you have your fourth one. Yeah, I can. Yes. How can you help me? And, you know, as long as you come in this with a selfless service, being of service to that person, this is a great spoke. And, and you know, if you need more business, just go fishing more in that bass pond. Um, so the other thing that I've really learned in um, doing all the leads is that you can build a referral network. So when I first got in, it took me about six months to get going, and it was about getting the letters right for my area. And I have a different letter for San Francisco. I have a different letter for Marin County. I have a different letter for Sonoma. I mean, you know, I think the biggest thing that you and I figured out is what works in Virginia is not going to work in California. What works in California is definitely not working in Texas. Right. right. So, you know, it's just about creating your own your own um, system. Um, you know, one of my favorite stories was I got a couple of probates from the county and I got a divorce from one of the judges who I handled the probate. He just needed a name for this couple that couldn't decide on a realtor. Hell, they didn't even like their attorneys. And then from then, it started a whole divorce referral network that I got from other attorneys because you got to think about it when you're in a really hot contested divorce when you come up and say you know I'll handle the painting I'll handle the marketing I'll handle the repairs I'll even help you get movers um, and uh, they get constant referrals um, I apologize some guy just walked in here was working on my house um, <laughs> So, you know, the, you know the, the other thing that I really wanted to um, point out with my students that I train in probate, as long as they're disciplined with making the phone calls when you first get the information and you follow up with a letter, they, they start getting business in six months or less, which is way different than for me. Um, you know, the other, you preach. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And my schedule reflects my probate calls. I schedule when I'm going to phone call. You know, so um, in less than three years, I've done 
54 deals. I've grossed 560,000, um, all, all on probate. Um, I have built an incredible amount of referral business from the attorneys and CPAs that I never thought would ever come to me. It's all because I, because I give them a solution. You know, an attorney in a divorce, a lot of time gets paid when the house sells. You know, the, the CPA who's helped managing the estate collects his fee normally when the house sells, right? Um, and the other side that has really come to me is, uh, you know, I've always had a good builder business or flippers. And um, it's amazing how when I walk into a home and the home like has, well, the best thing you could say about this home is that it has the sunshine coming through the ceiling and it's, and, and it's unique. I mean, there's a big hole in the ceiling and what the couple or the sellers want to hear is, um, can you help me? Do you have a solution? And that was bringing a, a builder in paying cash for the property, right? And sometimes I take a less commission for that, but then when the builder goes to flip the house, I get paid on that end too. So that 560 is not reflecting any of that business. Also, I'll tell you that most of those 54 deals were never even on MLS because that's kind of how the business goes for me right now, is that when I get a property, it's so hot right now, everyone's got a buyer. So I want to go back to the way you built your referral network. And, and one of the things you haven't mentioned that I think you're doing is, is you're working. Like, so in some markets, you guys are going to know this is a public administrator, but in California, it's a fiduciary. And you had worked some, you tell us how, about how you got to know the fiduciaries and kind of earn those, those referrals. Um, so what I did was I sent them each a letter. It was your letter explaining the services I offer. And then about three weeks later, I just went in and introduced myself and I had the same letter with me and I laid it on their desk. And um, when they, and they all kind of put it to a test. They had big clean out houses, you know, which is an eight, eight or nine debris boxes. Um, and when I performed after that, they really liked me. And they call me call me when they have a house. But the thing about California is you can only get so many per per year. Yeah. What's been um what's been the biggest surprise or the biggest lesson in this for you since you started serving families in probate? Well, I think there's been two big ones. One seems really pretty simple to me is that in California you mostly have trust with power of sales. But Every once in a while, you get probates, right, without the power of sale, and you got to go to court for that, right? Well, when you're selling people, you can't just say probate and you can't just say trust. You got to work probate and trust into when you're talking to people. And then the last thing is never, ever assume there's only one property. One of my best, yeah, one of my best clients, and they were in England. And I had sent them a letter and when they would call me, their phone number would be from Tiburon, which is a place in Marin. And so I talked to them four, five, six times and, and they had tenants in, in this house. And I said, well, the most important thing to do is to give the tenant as much notice as you can. This is California, right? Well, so I, they asked me to give the notice to the tenant. I said, I need a listing agreement. And they said, send me three listing agreements. I thought I was getting one deal out of it. I got three deals out of that one. So never assume it's only one, yeah. ever, and ask questions. I never assume, that's a good point. I mean, we I have this conversation God, at least once a week with people who get the list and they look at the deceased last known address. They look at this one column and try to deduce everything. They try to tell the whole story. And I always encourage people, I'm like, pick up the phone and you'll know the whole story. Ask good questions, like and have an empathetic curiosity. And exactly. a lot of people scrub their list and say, well, I don't work that zip code. But the, the deceased last known address is just as simple as that. It's somewhere they lived when they passed away. And I have heard dozens upon dozens upon dozens of stories similar to yours where they did actually on last week's mastermind call, uh, a guy piped up and told the story. He got a $1.8 million listing 
that had nothing to do with the probate. The son was probating a, a parent's estate. And he's like, yeah, my mom and dad sold their house years ago, but I, I've got a $1.8 million house, and you seem like you're pretty sharp. Like, you want to come list my house? And he took a $1.8 million listing off of a personal representative, like his own house. It had nothing to do with the probate. So that, that, that you never know where the opportunities are going to come from or who's going to own what. I mean, I think I was shocked. At, did you know that Steve Jobs, his estate was probated? Yes. So he didn't have it. He didn't have a trust. Like who the hell would have ever thought that? that? Well, that's kind of like throwing away seven hundred and fifty grand. Yeah. So, but you just you never know who it's going to be and, and what the situation is going to be until you pick up the phone. And that's what we teach in everything. Is you know what? Ask good questions. Do this for the right reasons. Ask good questions. Get them to engage with you. Find out what their problems are and just become the solution. Exactly. Um, Exactly. And, you know, I had a, a great client. Their mom was a hoarder um, and he was a referral from an attorney and he was living in Wyoming and he and I hit it off real big. Um, and, uh, you know, that was 19 boxes. And that guy was so grateful to me. And he was born and bred in, 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 in Marin and has lots of friends in Marin. And he's referred them all to me. And it's all because I was willing to take on that mountain. And he had to do nothing. So being, I guess at this point, you're almost four years into it, a couple of years with us and a couple of years on your own. So mm -hmm. if, uh, what advice do you give to your coaching students that come to you that, that are thinking about getting into probate or what, let's say that they're committed to getting into probate. They've kind of made that decision. Like, what do you think is the best advice for somebody just getting started out in this niche? Call Jim Sullivan and sign up. Um, and the reason, and, and and I'm not saying that because I'm in this interview with you. There's other companies trying to do what you guys do. The quality of information is not the same. Um, the service is definitely not the same. The help is not the same. And I would say the biggest thing, which I said earlier, was that you now have a contact management system that literally saves me I mean, saves me at least 1500 a month because I would pay someone to go ahead and enter all that data into a database. And now it just comes that way and you can transfer it into a CSV file and you can mail off that through Excel, which is I was. And, you know, I want to say that the reason why I do my letters is because each area is a little different. And and I really want them to feel the um, I really want them to feel the quality of the letter, which is a little different than the way you guys do it. Not that your letters are not quality; they are. You guys have two prices. Um, and then the and then the other thing I just wanted to make sure that we mentioned that you are making contacts for life here, right? Yeah. People remember when you stepped up to help them and the projects we take on are ugly. I mean, some houses need everything or better yet, you know, they just need a bulldozer to go right through that. You know, I'm selling a ranch right now that was inherited that had 29 liens on it. Um, and um, we are in the midst of helping the gentleman that inherited it um, clean up the ranch. Um, we have a D9 going, scraping all the chicken shit off. I mean, you can't picture this bar property. But more than that, he didn't know how he was going to deal with the liens. And I have a loss mitigation spellogist that is going to file the back tax return, going to take care of the county of violations, and we're going to have a clear title in about three months. Yeah, I made a video last week about that, too, that I kind of sent out to everybody. Um, I don't know if you've ever you. I'm sure you've heard Roger Lacey on on some of our calls. He he's probably the best at that approach. Like anytime he and I was coaching a, a lady today, and I told her like, any if, if any time he can get someone to engage in a conversation with him, he adds them to his sphere of influence, which is awesome. And he's got just kind of like you. I mean, he, he's got business coming from all directions because he always finds a way to provide value, whether there's a house in the estate or not. And once he has a good conversation with somebody, like once he started two-way dialogue, he, he throws them in his sphere of influence. So 
they see regular, you know, regular emails from him. They get regular calls from him. And that, you know, that was, I brought him up in that video that I made because, you know, when you call your sphere of influence, how many of those people do you call out and say, well, you know, they didn't sell their house this month or, you know, they didn't list their house with me this month, so I'm never calling them again. No, I'm like, we continue to call them and see how we can provide value. And if exactly. you approach probate that way, if you have the, like a servant's heart and say, okay, I'm going to reach out. I, I know that you're in a stressful situation. I know that I'm better equipped than anyone in this market to help you. And I'm not going to try to control how I monetize that. Like so many people try to be in control and just get to listing. And those are the ones that usually, frankly, fall flat on their face. Um, the people yeah. like you that kind of look at it and say, okay, how can I help? And then the money always comes. Like it, it finds its way to you somehow. It always does. I mean, it, it always does. And, you know, the thing that I want to say is just because they didn't sell this probate house. I mean, I have all those rentals coming back now, right? So I most <laughs> people have um, landlords. They don't like it after about a year or two, yeah. Yeah. Um, especially in San Francisco, because you know the tenant has you once once they're there for a year. Um, and so by just calling them every six months and just saying hi, how you doing? And, uh, you know, a lot of time when they say to me on the phone, well, we're going to rent it out. I say, well, would you mind if I call you in six months, see how that's going? And if you ever need any forms or anything, let me know. So, yeah, 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 call me back, click. So I call them back. Hey, they're surprised I called them back, right? They're really surprised. And now they're learning what it's like to be a landlord, and they always have questions. Yeah. As we usually suggest, you know, well, listen, that's great. You know, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of our clients think that's that's a good option for them. What I'd like to do is kind of run some scenarios for you. So let let's run a what it looks like if you rent it, what it looks like if you sell it, and what it looks like if you invest some money into it. So you've got kind of a rental as is and retail sales scenario. And a lot of times when they actually when 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 they get down to the the, the facts of what it takes to rent the property, they either need to go with a property manager or sell the property and a lot of times people don't you don't know what you don't know so a lot of times it seems like a good idea it's like oh well, you know rents are strong we live in different states we can we can manage this you know once a year we'll sign a lease and checks will show up in the mail but that's hardly ever how it works out so we try to connect them with a the property manager um, show them what it looks like to sell they don't have to do that if they want to self-manage they can but usually the self-managers end up just like you're saying, they end up learning a lesson within the year, and and they're ready to sell when that lease is up. Yeah, but but the thing I think that we're missing, because you don't want it want it to sound like you're pushing the all the leads, but the the truth is, is the information comes in from all the leads, sorted, filtered, with tools that you just get on your CRM when it's time to start calling and you just start calling and it has a note system there. And, you know, the thing that I've always been surprised with, you know, I call foreclosures, REOs, um, as long as it's distressed, I'm into it. And your information, I would say 80% of all the numbers are all correct. And that's all because how much care your partners put in shifting information and make sure they provide the most accurate data. And people don't realize that is what makes um, this system work, right? So, you know, I took off two weeks to move. I know I'm gonna pick up and I need to pick it up. All I'm gonna do is call more probate to make up my last two weeks, right? And the reason why I'm so confident in that is because I have the data and information to make it happen. You know, I'm positive, just like my basketball pawn analogy, if you had some bait that hit every single time, right, you would be using it all the time, right? That's what what all the leads are like, man. It's You, you will get hit all the time. You've got to apply yourself, and you got to have an open mind. I think the thing that, that the best line that I've ever heard was that, you know, you may be right, or... Um, or, you know, I could see that, that that could be the best thing for you. I understand that. But, you know, if going down that line of thinking, would you mind if we looked at the option? Right. 
and you lay it out for them, just like you said. And it's just truly amazing. You know, my, my wife, who is in nursing school right now, um, is so self-confident in, in the probate leads that she asked me, do you make your probate calls? She didn't ask me to call her. <laughs> your accountability partner, she's <laughs> like. Right. Did I call the probate? That's so, funny. Yeah. The coach is coach. Everybody needs a coach, right? I, I think they do. I, I definitely think you need to be accountable. And the coolest thing about Harris, where I get coached, which I think is different than Mike Ferry and, and all the other ones, is that we coach you where you want to go, which is what's great about all the leads. If you want to get some warm calls and build your skills, you can make a great living doing this. I mean, if you just pick one spoke, this would be the one spoke of my business. I would just not leave, period. I quit doing everything else. Like I, I, I had it down to like a science. It was like clockwork. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the media. I don't have the prices you do. I was my median was 117, and your what's your median? Probably eight, eight fifty. Uh, yeah, eight fifty. Yeah, yeah. And I really love the million dollar ones. Yeah. And I love San Francisco. You know how much I love San Francisco. It's the funnest place in the world to sell because you have every culture, personality, every ideology, and it's just so much fun to be open to things I've never heard. Some of the lines I love is is like my favorite one is um, this lady came up to me and she said, you dishonest, you dishonest. And I go, ma'am, what am I just, oh, you want too much for that house. I buy for my grandkids. I say, ma'am, how about before we say I'm dishonest, let's write an offer on the property first, you know? But that's just how they negotiate. It's so much fun. And this business is a great business. We get to help people. We, you know, I, you know, I was a mortgage broker for almost 30 years and, you know, I never always thought that I helped people, but, you know, the last six years in real estate have been a blast. I'm so excited to go to work and we just help people and we are solution providers, you know, and we just have to keep that in mind. Yep. If your heart's in the right place, you get paid handsomely too, right? Well, that, that's always good. <laughs> All right, well, we're almost on a half hour. So, any any last words of wisdom you'd like to leave with people? You know, um, yeah. You know, I want to tell you a story about my daughter Savannah. My daughter, we went flat broke, and um, my daughter used to cut out um, cardboard for her tennis shoes every morning before she went to school, so she didn't tell me that she needed tennis shoes. And I think that we all need to remember the hard times so that when we have the good times, we remember those that are not fortunate, as fortunate as we are. And I don't know exactly how to say this, but that we always need to be giving back to our community and helping others and helping other realtors that are in this business. Um, and, you know, always, you know, extend the helping hand, whether it's your competition or not, it will always come back. God bless. That's a great way to close it, and that's what you're doing here tonight. So I really appreciate you being open to sharing. There, there's a lot of agents that aren't as successful as you, but they they want to play their cards close to their vest and aren't willing to share. And you you always you're always there to step up and talk to folks who need it and do stuff like this. So thanks so much for taking the time to do this tonight, Bill. All right, you have a great day. All right, you too.